Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I have joined. Okay, thank you so much. Good. So, sir, uh, who are the participants so that I get an idea? Sir, your voice is not very clear, sir. Uh, okay. Is it okay now? Yes, yes, yes. I can hear you now. So, just I wanted to ask who, who will be the likely participant so that I can... Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, today actually we have almost uh, 400 applicants. So, some of them are from abroad also, maybe five, six okay. countries. And okay. from here, PhD students, MS students, BTEC students. Mixture uh, of BTEC, okay. Yeah. So, maximum of them are either MTEC or BTEC students. And so, what I propose is I will uh, split my talk in three parts. First, I will give a brief about the industry. Okay. And uh, then I will give the design flow. Okay. How is the design flow, analog, digital, mix signal? Yes. And after that, uh, I will talk about the uh, physical implementation for analog design in detail. So, like okay, this. Okay. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Hmm? Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, maybe uh, it's two hours. So, if you want to uh, have a small break in between, uh, you can do Yeah. After one hour, we can have five minute break. and. Start. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. No problem. And if you wish, you can uh, try. Uh, um one sec the slides if you wish yeah this is you will um okay but uh, i can share my screen here also right yes sir yes sir uh -oh. Yes, yes, it's coming. Yes, uh, it's coming. Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. Slides are moving. No problem. Thank you. Okay. So should I move uh, the share or it should be like uh, that? Yeah, it may be like that. So no problem. No problem. Huh? Okay. So uh, let's wait for maybe ten minutes. Uh, yeah, we will wait after ten yeah. minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. our uh, yeah, our physicist will uh, uh, give a very small uh, inauguration talk, maybe yeah, two, yeah, three yeah. four minutes. Then uh, fine. And then it's the talk. Okay. Fine, sir. Okay. Thank you.
रूपम रूपम हेलो यस सर विशाल काम और राइट टू लेट विशाल बिट हेलो विशाल काम और राइट टू लेट हेलो रुपम यस सर विशाल काम जॉइन नो Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He'll join sh shortly, sir. Around five minutes. Five more minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Just try to wait. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. 
हेलो आई आई बी विद यू इन अनदर कपल ऑफ मिनट्स ओके आई हैव जॉइन आई हैव जॉइन आई जस्ट या या श्योर थैंक यू सर Yeah, Rupam, you can start. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon to one and all present here, honourable uh, VC Tejpur University, uh, respected guest speaker of today's sessions, my dear colleagues, and uh, all the all my dear students. So, uh, first of all, I would like to welcome you to this. Five day webinar series on electronic devices and systems, uh, covering five broad areas, and we will be having uh, eminent speakers uh, from all these areas who will be delivering their talks uh, over these five days. And uh, this is an event to mark the Silver Jubilee celebration of this department, uh, the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Uh, Tejpur University. So, uh, therefore, uh, the objectives of this particular webinar series are to offer a platform for research scholars, faculty, and researchers to know and discuss about the current trends in the electronic devices and systems, and also to motivate our budding researchers towards acquiring skills. on the different technology trends so we have over 350 uh, participants for this webinar series from around six countries uh, apart from india and as a part of this inaugural ceremony i now request uh, honorable vc tejpur university professor vk jain to deliver the inaugural address so please uh, sir it so sorry to interrupt but it seems you are muted Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Lucas. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's the, let's dean, let's the dean of the School of Engineering, the head of the Department of uh, Electronics and Communication Engineering, the um, honourable speaker, uh, uh, Shri Harpreet Singh Jatana Sahab from ISRO, uh, all the faculty members, the scholars, and uh, all the participants. Uh, a very good afternoon to each one of you, and I'm so glad that uh, the Department of ECE uh, is organizing this five-day webinar series on some of the uh, emerging areas uh, in the in the field of uh, electronic devices and systems. Uh, all of you are 
um, much more aware than I am uh, about the uh, the emerging areas. Uh, but uh, for some of us uh, who um, are not so much conversant with the latest developments in the field of electronic devices and systems, uh, but the fact remains that uh, the the applications of these devices and systems, uh, the you know the impact of these uh, is all pervasive for everyone to see. So whether it is in the in the field of uh, space research or whether it is the communications, whether it is something to do with signal and uh, image processing, the biomedical image uh, uh, processing and instrumentation, photonics, optical devices, microwave devices, transducers, sensors, and uh, power systems, robotics, automation, and what have you. Uh, so a uh, uh, you know, huge number of areas uh, you have the applications of these devices and systems. And uh, the the all these uh, the research in these areas has has uh, grown tremendously from the time uh, when we were youngsters way back in uh, uh, early 70s or late 60s uh, back then i do remember although i did my specialization in electronics uh, when i was doing my masters uh, but then we were only introduced to diode triode pentode um, and we were just about introduced with the with the uh, gates, these logic uh, logic gates. Uh, so, um, uh, but then uh, now, if you look at the uh, the electronics, both analog uh, and of course now digital electronics, is just uh, you know the phenomenal growth in in the research in these uh, areas is is just mind boggling. Um, but one of the things which is also uh, very much apparent these days. Uh, it is uh, this that uh, the the, uh, uh, the the application oriented research or the research which has a potential for innovation actually is at the interface of uh, several disciplines. Or uh, uh, so so therefore the interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary research uh, has to be pursued to come up with with uh, some innovations these days and uh, in fact uh, most of the great discoveries and innovations are at the interface of uh, of these disciplines so therefore i think my uh, unsolicited advice to all the youngsters the young researchers is that uh, do collaborate uh, with people from from the disciplines of basic sciences or natural sciences and think of problems which are of interdisciplinary nature, which have potential for, uh, you know, product development or, you know, for, for improving the particular process. And uh, so with these few words, I, I uh, would like to put on record a word of appreciation to the HOD and all the uh, organizers of this webinar series. Uh, so best of luck and uh, have a great success. Thank you, Rupam, and thank you, uh, Ratul Saab. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you uh, for the inaugural address, and thank you for motivating our budding researchers. I now request uh, Dr. Ratul Kumar Borwa uh, to continue with today's technical talk. Thank you. Ratul Saab, you are you are muted. Yeah, oh, sorry. So thank you, Rupam. We are very lucky uh, to have with us this afternoon, Zatana sir uh, from ISRO. Uh, I met him personally. Uh, he is scientist Z and group head at Semiconductor Laboratory, ISRO. He received the engineering education degree at Bitspilani and joined CMC, New Delhi, where he was involved in railways computerization work. He then left CMC to join 
the Rockwell Semiconductor at US and worked there as IC design engineer on 65 C series. Later, he joined SCL Mohali and he has very fast experience in key areas like VLSI design, process development and integration, VLSI taste, CMOS and MEMS manufacturing, etc. He has more than 15 publications in IEEE journals. As group head and design process group at ISTRO, he is credited with development of key VLSI products for space technology and applications, high voltage CMOS process, SY CMOS process, and bipolar processes. He is interested in spreading microelectronics education in India and has conducted several workshops and given many talks at many IITs, NITs, and other universities. So he is a visiting professor at MIT Pune and Sulni University Himachal. So with this, uh, once again, I thank you, Jatana sir, for accepting our invitation. And thank you so much. I now hand over to Jatana sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for the introduction. And uh, first of all, to begin with, I would like to thank you. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Rupam Goswami. And I also I would like to thank and express my gratitude towards Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Vinod Jain Sahib, and uh, for giving me an opportunity to interact with your participants. And uh, I am very pleased that you have organized this uh, webinar uh, series, webinar week. And there are very important uh, talks which are lined up on semiconductor devices and other things. And uh, my talk, uh, I will spend two hours with the participants. I will first of all start with a brief on semiconductor or VLSI market, uh, the global market, what is the trend in general. And then I will, I will discuss the design flow. The, how is the design integrated circuit design done? What is the flow for an analog, purely analog circuit, for a purely digital circuit, for a mixed signal circuit? And then in the third portion, I will take up the physical part, physical implementation of the analog, the design part, the layout design. What are the issues? What are the challenges in the layout design part? So this is what I plan. And uh, I will... Uh, share the screen to begin with my talk and uh, as uh, I will start with a brief on the market because there are I guess amongst the participants there are many students so it is important to know about the markets and uh, uh, in this particular field uh, is my I don't think screen is visible, right? Or is it visible, please? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, sir. Okay. So uh, this uh, VLSI or is uh, semiconductor, basically, it's a highly segmented uh, this thing industry. Highly segmented means there are uh, there are many verticals around six and seven different verticals. So I will concentrate only on one or one or two. One is the what I can say the market for the chips, uh, chip sales. You can say the products, the VLSI circuits which are made on a silicon. Or, or uh, nowadays even uh, gallium nitrite and gallium arsenide, some, something related to germanium is also there. So all the components, whether integrated circuits or discrete transistors, like LEDs, for example, everything, that is close to something around 560, 550 billion dollar entire. And this market, if you see the very important uh, features of this, uh, uh, this total market, Basically, around 70% of the manufacturing, 70% of the manufacturing is done in one country, and that country is Taiwan. 70% of the ICs, uh, Taiwan is doing, and there are two main companies. One is a TCMS, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and UMC. 
and then us has 9% share china 7% share south korea 7.4% south korea as all of us are aware samsung is a big player israel has 2% tower zaz is an israeli company and then uh, in uh, belgium and austria there is an austrian micro system ems so this is one which is a we are talking about the chip this is one uh, chip manufacturing another is the wafer fab equipment the foundry equipment where the chip is manufactured it is known as a uh, fab 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 stands for basically a short form of fabrication or it's also known as a foundry so foundry equipment that also around 60 to 70 billion dollar market is for that also then there is an eda tools there are three companies eda tools around 9, 9 to 10 billion dollar market for eda tools test equipment gases and chemicals and all those different verticals so it's a highly segmented industry and uh, if you see the company wise if we talk about main companies in chip manufacturing only i'm uh, here no design no test no packaging only the chip manufacturing total of the total chip which are manufactured in the world one company tsmc does 52% it's a big uh, company uh, they want semiconductor manufacturing company and around 18 19% is done by umc that also is a tawani's company so that is how the one share is more than 70% and uh, after this uh, there is a samsung and uh, global foundries it's a american company global foundries gb they have their foundries in diff in uh, different countries across the globe that is why the name global umc is again a taiwanese company smic is a chinese company it ha it has also around 6 7% of share this is so this is the main tsmc as you know due to some global politics scenario china taiwan issue tsmc is trying to expand to other countries as well very recently they have announced around 20 billion dollar uh, investment in united states and uh, 10 billion dollar investment in um, japan two fabs they are uh, making in japan and two from they are making in arizona one fab they are talking to government of germany in fact india also we also tried in the last 3 4 months to bring uh, tsmc here but uh, somehow the things have not materialized uh this time maybe after one or two years some good company might come here to set up a very big foundry here another important point is the us share in chip manufacturing is declining it was when this cmos started it was around 37% and now it has around less than 10% now 8 9% and the share of china is increasing share of china in the manufacturing is increasing you see india if you see we have good strength in design vlsi design we do around um, 35 to 40% of the world design in india and uh, but we don't have an ip of our own because uh, indian engineers are working for mncs and uh, mncs hold the ip manufacturing we are not uh, only one fab scl that also is a around uh, 600 700 wafer starts per month it's a very r&d kind of a unit not a factory not an industry so this is how this graph shows the this blue one is the us the us share in the chip market has fallen and uh, the china is growing this one this color is of china and similarly for other countries we we can ignore them this is chip consumption by region so china is consuming lot of chips this blue you can see that is the consumption by china and this blue color this black is the consumption by united states which has which has been almost constant or somewhat declined in the last uh, this starts from 2003 so in the last 17 years you have seen this blue color this is increasing this is the consumption of china is also increasing this shows this shows how uh, the pace of development in china okay this gives an indicator the more number of vlc uh, vlsi devices being used it also gives an indicator 
in uh, in red color is japan this one this is japan japan you uh, you have seen that it is almost uh, on the decline trend and this color is of europe and uh, top is about uh, asia and rest of the country is green color these are uh, slides which are available on the net and some important slides i so india semiconductor market we are not uh, producing uh, any chip but we are doing a lot of assembly particularly assembly of mobile phones that has picked up and value addition is quite less when you do assembly of these because you get the components from abroad or these components they came from china even the pcb it's a 24 layered pcb which is used in mobile phone that also is not made in india it comes from china so we are doing global uh, we are doing soldering that's a wave soldering and this is all we are doing another important aspect of the business if we see the revenue from where we get the revenue we i have taken tsmc as an example which is the largest player doing 48% of the manufacturing 48% of the chip so they get you can see 51% of the revenue from smartphones 51% of the chips 51% of the total revenue is earned from the chips which are made for smartphone 31% of the revenue is earned from the chips which are used in high performance computers laptop desktop servers and uh, tsmc in fact many companies which are even intel they make their they use tsmc uh, fab for producing their latest uh, processor which goes in 5 or 7 nanometer latest notes qualcomm qualcomm is a pure design company fabless company it its uh, turnover is close to 13 or 14 billion dollar and uh, it makes processor for the mobile snapdragon snapdragon except apple all phones have this processor there are two three versions of that so this qualcomm also does its production at tsmc so like many companies they are doing their production at tsmc so you can see the revenue uh, generated 82% 82% of the revenue is generated from two segments smartphones and processors for desktop lap laptop and like that 3% is automotive vehicles this is also picking up lot of components ICs are used in cars and other things IoT is 7% lot of talk about IoT it's 7% of this if we if i if we see the node wise technology wise uh, 7 nanometer node is under production at tsmc and samsung not at intel intel is struggling to improve their yields in that so but uh, if you see the revenue uh, technology segment wise 29% of the total revenue again this is a tsmc i am talking not general of one company which is the largest company uh, 29% uh, you can say uh, little less than one third revenue comes from 7 nanometer and 5 uh, nanometer recently they have started 20% revenue so 20 and 29 so you can say 49 almost half of their revenue comes from the node which are below 10 nanometer 50% of the revenue is coming from two nodes 7 nanometer 5 nanometer which are below 10 nanometer nodes they are finfit second generation of finfit devices and those devices are they are digital processors used in smartphones and high performance computing and there are of course old old nodes also uh, at scl we have a 180 nanometer node and 180 nanometer node if you see this 7% of the total market of the total chip which are made in all technology 7% are still made in 180 nanometer node in the world okay so this is the uh, market segment if uh, if i tell you this much uh, from the top bar the second color this one this one represent 0.180 node so you can see it is consistent for the last this is 2015 2015 to 2025 this is projection 2025 we are here so 0.18 node 
the market of 0.18 node is fixed it's not changing these are old nodes these these are old nodes their market is fixed these are the new nodes okay with this color and these nodes are below 10 nanometer below 10 nanometer because we came around 7 or 9 nanometer in 2017 so there it's consistently growing this node is consistently growing but other nodes other nodes are retaining same it is not that the other nodes are declining so whatever products have been made in those nodes they are still being made okay and as you can see this overall market is growing and the new nodes have more growth exponential you can say rather exponential growth but in the other nodes the market is fixed it's uh, not growing it is fixed because the designs which were done in the older nodes they are still there they are still being produced and uh, this is is going to be the likely trend now if you see the number of players i am talking about uh, chip manufacturing only chip manufacturing this is a very important data from a bernstein research company 2020 that this is the source it is there on the net so if you see 1 130 nanometer there are 25 companies 130 nanometer there are 25 companies analog devices texas instruments toshiba so st micro there are so many companies then comes the next node 90 nanometer there are only 18 companies okay then comes the next node which is 65 nanometer from 18 it remains 13 companies which are st micro umc panasonic global foundries intel tsmc samsung toshiba smic which is chinese company renesia and if you if if i come at 45 and 40 nanometer 13 remains same 13 13 again because from 65 nanometer to 45 nanometer there is there is a there is a big change because of we we get high k dielectric and metal gates done at 45 nanometer first time from 65 to 45 there is a big change and then if you see from lower node then 40 is uh, 32 or uh, 28 and the number of companies reduced from 13 to 9 and then 20 nanometer 9 to 6 only 6 companies are there and then 14 and 16 nanometer only 5 companies next 10 and below 10 nanometer there are only 3 companies which have remained this is 10 nanometer 7 nanometer 5 nanometer only 3 companies have remained and those threes are tsmc intel samsung intel samsung tsmc is leading they have their 7 nanometer node 5 nanometer node in production samsung is doing 7 nanometer in production intel is slightly behind that is why they are using their they are manufacturing their latest processor in tsmc fab so what is the reason for this the investment the heavy investment if you have to make a plant of 10 nanometer today it will not cost less than 10 billion dollar 10 billion dollar you can convert it into rupees and uh, to develop a node the process r and d is also few billion dollars so it's a very uh, like uh, you can say high capex node and uh, only the big players can do that now this uh, all of us have studied studied cmos planar circuit which is a conventional and uh, till 65 nanometer the same device but with lot of new materials being added is used there is a major major change below 65 to non conventional thing below 20 there is another uh, change below uh, rather below 25 the conventional mos which we have studied like we have a source we have a drain we have a gate so this particular when the channel length reduces below 24 nanometer the gate loses control over the channel and the architecture of this device has to be changed either dual gate or a tri gate or a fin fed so we opted for fin fed so below 20 nanometer only fin fed is there this kind of a topology is not there so this is what it shown here it's a planar fin fed 7 nanometer 5 nanometer planar fin feds are used 
right now 5 nanometer is uh, by the end of this year it it will be under mass production and uh, after 5 nanometer 3 nanometer or 2 nanometer or 1 nanometer are being planned those devices will be entirely different from finfit they will be some vertical fats or complementary fats or gate all around gaa fats so those will be very complicated devices and manufacturing also is a big change and uh, so this is the kind of a road map which is uh, fork sheet complementary fat nano sheet these kind of devices will be there in the next 5 uh, to 10 years again this is an uh, you can see here this is gate all around gate gate all around so channel will be there all around will be gate so this is a traditional fin fat and uh, this is a vertical gate all round device like gate source drain and gate all round so manufacturing all these devices will not be easy as as you can see here it's a one transistor but we will have to make in a small area billions of these transistors with the same accuracy so that is the challenge the manufacturing of these kind of devices will be a real challenge which lot of which people are working lot of companies are working lot of um uh, work is going on in various universities even so to make these new devices which will be a real challenge so another uh, this i will skip lithography so these will be the uh, if you see a single transistor but if you see a nand gate or an or gate so in a vertical devices so it just becomes like this so you have a stacked devices so it's not that easy from manufacturing point of view to make these stacks so th th that is the point which i am trying to make here now you see the new technology node one is the i will talk only about the design cost how much if you have to make a design in a new technology how much it costs if i start with the 65 nanometer 65 nanometer it uh, the design cost is around 28 million dollar 28 million dollar design cost it includes uh, physical design verification architecture ip qualification validation prototyping and all those things it includes all components of design starting from the scratch for at 40 nanometer it is 37 million dollar 28 nanometer it is 51 million dollar no c 16 nanometer 16 nanometer it is 100 million dollar 16 nanometer it is 100 million dollar 10 nanometer it is 174 million so 16 nanometer to 10 nanometer design cost increase 106 to 174 10 nanometer to 7 nanometer design cost will increase 174 to 290 million dollar and if you go from 7 nanometer to 5 nanometer the design cost is again doubled from 290 to 542 so if you see if you move from 7 to this it is it increases if you move from 10 nanometer to uh, 5 nanometer the design cost is 5 times it is 5 times that and uh, five around 540 million dollar is the design cost so the chip design cost is rising so quickly at the lower nodes very few companies can afford that kind of a cost as you can imagine and uh, if this design cost has to be divided among the ics among the uh, chips which will be manufactured the number of chip has to be very very huge and that is the reason those chips goes in your mobile phone you know the mobile phone sale is very high or your processors for a laptop desktop and servers so these are the two components which are highly uh, you can say in number wise the sale is the highest okay so and uh, this uh, i think euv and all those things i will skip i don't want to deviate from my um, from the theme of my talk so the new uh, you see in the last uh, because of the last two years because of covid there were some shortages of devices so many companies have lined up huge investments intel 20 billion dollar is planning to invest within this year and the next year 
In fact, they have already started their two very new, very big fabs, 60,000 wafer starts per month in one fab in Arizona and $20 billion investment. TSMC is planning three years, $100 billion investment. And they are going to Japan, they're going to Germany. Samsung is planning 116 billion over the next decade. So these are the kind of investment which are lined up for the big by the big players. And uh, I will uh, uh, skip some of these slides because of uh, the time constraint. I have already taken more time. I will go to the other segment because it's an interesting thing, but one can go. There are a lot of other things which uh, maybe next time sometimes I will skip. So I will focus on the the design flows and we will see some of the design issues. So analog design. So what is the design flow? So design flow, you start with the design specification, you form the design specification, which will be VI specification, timing related, what is the functionality, what is the input voltage, output voltage, how are the timings, current and things like that. Based on that, you will, you will finalize your architecture. Arch architecture may have uh, different blocks, blocks may have sub blocks, and then you will do the design of those blocks, sub blocks. Okay, so you can do the design and uh, after doing the design, you will do schematic entry and then you can simulate those, simulate front end simulations where the transistor is represented as a symbol. So if these specifications are met and then we will do the layout. And after doing the layout, we will do physical verification and uh, parasitic extraction. Again, do the simulations if the results are okay, we will go with release the GDS. Okay, so this is the analog design part. If you see the tool which is used, you see there are three big companies, EDA tools. If I there are three main EDA companies. One is your Synopsys. Their tools are very good for digital. Then there is a Cadence, very good for analog. Then there is a Mentor. Mentor Graphics or Mentor Simons. Now, last year they have been taken over by Simons. So it's Mentor. It's physical uh, verification tools are very good, which is a caliber, which is a golden, uh, you can say verification tool caliber. And Virtuoso is a cadence tool. And uh, HSpice is cadence. So this is this is a simulator, HSpice and Spectre. So you can do the schematic, uh, for a schematic, you can use a Virtuoso and uh, and then you can, uh, for any circuit, you can realize a circuit, enter that circuit schematic entry in a Virtuoso tool and you can form a schematic that netlist can be simulated using in an analog design environment, EDE it's known as, and you can generate a netlist and you can use a simulator which is an edge spice also under simulation and uh, uh, under analog design environment you can use simulator edge spice or you can if uh, xa is a very fast edge spice normally does a very long simulations transistor wise xa is a fast one and uh, you have to give model file you have to tell the model file which the foundry will give and you have to give the net list of your circuit here we have to feed this to the simulator and you can see the result in a waveform viewer. It will tell you the waveforms, input, output waveforms, how it is coming, it will tell you. Okay, so say in the same way you have designed a circuit, you have simulated it, you have seen the circuit is working, you have seen in the waveform. If you are satisfied with the performance of the circuit, then do the layout here. Do the layout and P cells, parameter, parameterized cells are available. So by using this, you can do the layout and then IO cells, boundary will give you and the power cells, VDD and all those things, ground cells, technology files, what are the layers? What is the layer definition? What are the design rules? So all those things will come under this when you are doing the layout. And when you have done the layout, again, you can, after doing the layout, you can do the physical part 
physical verification whether the layout you see i have a, a schematic like this any say a very simple schematic i have this i have done a layout in terms of physical how these transistors will be laid so i have to ensure that this physical layout is same as this no component is missing no component is added so i will verify that schematic versus layout design rules have been met or not electrical ercs electrical rule check and all those things which we will discuss in detail so uh, all those things are there or not you verify those and then you will extract the uh, various components are connected through signal nets you will extract those uh, parasites of the parasitic capacitances resistances of the net and see the effect on the circuit and again simulate it so this is how by using these various uh, design uh, tools you can have a analog design digital design is more of a tool dependent lot of many tools are involved in this and the design flow is also a little bit complicated as a number of steps are more now the first thing is any digital behavior you can write a vhdl a software uh language a high level lang language very log or a vhdl you can write generate a netlist and you can simulate uh, this you can check the behavior whether the functionality is being met or not and then based on the various blocks in the digital side you can have a floor plan where to place various like if i have a one chip there may be many memory cuts okay so if i am if i need 2 mb of memory and uh, i will not put this 2 mb memory at one place across the chip the best will be if this particular segment needs around 256 bits of memory and uh, it uses memory quite often so 256 bits of memory i will place close to this so that it is uh, it takes less time okay and uh, similarly if this particular logic needs a memory i will put a memory here also so memory is scattered like this way to make it more it's not that one big chunk of memory and this circuit also is uh, talking to this it is not like that so memory is scattered and how you plan how you plan where to keep everything so that things comes in the floor plan then how the power uh, grid because each segment will get a power and nowadays chips need because of low power design there will be multiple power from the outside there will be 1 volt say 3.3 volt but inside the chip there may be 3.3 volt ios 1.8 volt 1.0 volt or 0.8 volt also might be there so there will be uh, uh, linear voltage regulators lvrs and they will generate these things and then you have to distribute so that the ir drop is minimized so and then each there has to be clock going across the chip so how to synthesize the clock and then at each node you have to see the there is no violation of setup and hold violation that is a static timing analysis that one particular step is there then you have to route the signal you have to analyze the timings you have to do ir drop and uh, em analysis and uh, then you have to close the design then you have to do the parasitic extraction and finally your uh, signal integrity test and then sign off and then drc lvs so it's a there are many tools involved in a digital flow and uh, it's a tool dependent whereas analog you need just two or three tools which is not the case for a digital design and uh, uh, here we have uh, these uh, different tools which are there which can be used air post synthesis is normally you uh, you have a synthesis means to if you have written a code vhdl or a very very long you give it to the synthesis tool it will generate a gate list and uh, the synthesis tool but need the foundry standard it needs a standard cell library for doing this so this is done is a design compiler okay so this way i will not discuss much about the digital uh, thing in a mix signal nowadays many of the design are mix signal 
So what we do for analog design, we follow the analog flow. For a digital design, we follow the digital flow. You simulate it, you verify it both, and then finally you convert these integrated, and then you do the uh, mixed mode simulations where the input can be a digital signal, output can be an analog. So mixed mode simulations can be done. And uh, those things, this is a complete mixed signal design flow where it, it shows all the uh, tools which are used, right? Starting from the RTL code, synthesis, DFT insertion, BSD, text, uh, test compression, power optimization. And then this is a place and route tool because it, it's a synopsis tool, uh, design compiler. It's a place and route. So all these segments are given to place and route and finally to a layout editor. And uh, this is the analog part, analog layout, and this is digital lay layout. And finally, they are integrated together. So some of these slides may not be visible. I will give you these slides. So it, it's a it, it's a standard flow which all companies follow. There's nothing uh, special, nothing specific about these. These tools are, are also more or less standard. Every Everybody follows these tools, these standard tools. And uh, this is a list of the various tools. Like for linting check, it's a LIDAR checker. For digital simulation, VCS, analog, custom sim, circuit simulation, it's HPICE or a SPECTRE or an XA, which is a fast simulator. Formality is used for formal verification. Then design compiler for your synthesis. And uh, ICC is a place and route. It's a layout of digital place and route tool. Static timing analysis, prime time, very popular. It's a very popular tool. So design tools, all these tools are of synopsis. Synopsis tools for design and digital design are very good. Then extraction is a caliber, which is a mentor. Tetramax and uh, Hercules, Asura, physical verification. That's the, this is a synopsis and power and prime time is also synopsis. So this is how these various tools, they are almost standard. Every company uses these tools only. And uh, I will uh, next come to the main part of my uh, talk, which is I will, we will discuss the flow, the issues, the challenges which are there in an analog part, analog physical verification part. This is what the main, uh, so this is the, let me, okay, so this is the layout you, you can see. So what are the issues when we make this layout starting from a, and this is the analog flow which we discussed. And finally, we will we have made a circuit here. We have seen, we have simulated the circuit, it is working. And then we will start with from here, we will start with the layout of these. So, what are the issues in the layout when we do? So, layout is the uh, process of creating mask geometries because based on this your circuit net, net list. You uh, make a layout and the layout is released in terms of GDS tape and from there masks are made and uh, these masks are used in fabrication of this. Okay, so this is an example. If it's a very simple differential amplifier, the circuit will look like this. These are the two transistors and this is the current source. This is the active load. This is the symbol of this in a netlist. You will, if a, 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 if you see a transistor netlist, it will show these transistors. And uh, this is the first stage of an op amp or a uh, single stage of a differential amplifier. When so, from a schematic point of view, the uh, these this is the schematic, but on a way for how will it look? It will look like this, where in different colors you are seeing different layers, like this is a metal layer and. Uh, I have, uh, I have connected this metal to a VDD. This green color is an active area. This red is a poly. So like this. So this is a source drain. This is also an active area. And uh, this is a poly here. Red is a poly and this is connected to a poly. So these are the various layers. 
and this is exactly this is one transistor this is another transistor so this is this is exactly how this transistor is layout this is the transistor design on how it looks on a uh, silicon wafer how it will be fabricated so these are the normal processes in a uh, you can say 180 or a 130 nanometer process very simplified process so these will be the various masks because nowadays we are using twin twin well processes twin well means i start with any wafer whether i start with p or n so this is say i start with p substrate so the first step i will do is i will make uh, two wells like this one will be n well and another will be p well and uh, after making the well i will define the active areas like this this much area is the active area in this active area is the area where transistor will be made other area which is known as a field area is where the isolation will be there and isolation can be trench isolation or it can be local uh, oxidation low cost oxid uh, isolation so there will be mask for each there will be mask for n n well there will be mask for making p well so like this so this means in this area on the wafer this is the top view so where this square you are seeing this much area is reserved for p well this much area is reserved for n well okay this much area is reserved for n well and uh, within this reserve well because within the well i will make a transistor within this well so this is the active area rest of the area will be a will be a field area for isolation okay so this is a field uh, active area and within the active area this is a gate mask this poly will come here here poly will come here like this so you can see this will come here and this line will come here this line will come here this is gate mask and it's a self aligned process once self aligned process i will do a gate mask and i will do the implants n implants plus d implant then p plant p implants source drain will be made and then i will make contacts so you can see here these three contacts source these three drain and this is a gate contact of all five transistors of these contacts so in fact uh, this is the exact if you see corresponding to this so this is one this is p green color p well this color orange type which you are seeing is n well so the same thing is here you can see here i made n well i made a p well i made a p well or an n well here okay so this is and then within active area mask green it defines the active area it defines the active area in this active area will be defined which is not coming very clearly because the colors are superimposed and then there will be gate mask gate mask will this this red color this red color poly which is a gate like this so this whole thing will be done like this and uh, this step i will skip this is basically a, this is a mask it's a photolithography and how this pattern is created on the wafer i think all of you know this i will skip this is the 3d view of a mosfet so this is the i will skip this also i will skip some of these uh, rules i believe there are around four different types of rule minimum width minimum space minimum extension overlap briefly uh, minimum width is what should be the width of this line it can be metal it can be poly what should be the separation it is given here then your if i have a well here n well and within the well i have a diffusion then how much edge clearance should be there there's the rules for that and this is an active area how much wide active area and how much away from this because it should not happen that i have a well here and yeah i have made it made an active area here but while designing while fabricating it can happen that this thing goes here like this so it will not be an it will be a failure the transistor will fail whatever you make here so in keeping in mind the process these rules are made so you have to uh, what should be the overlap and uh, you can see here that this is a metal 
and if you have to make a contact on the metal so this dimension and how much overlap should be so what should be the width what should be the spacing and extension beyond this you can see here this beyond this because if if i have a metal this and i have to make a contact like this for example so because of error because of uh, mask alignment error it may happen that my line is come here and this contact is slightly off like this then what will happen the contact resistance will be very high okay contact resistance will be very high so that is the reason i will make it something a bigger extension beyond this that is known as extension beyond this beyond the contact so that even if there is some slight misalignment if there is heavy misalignment you can't do it it will obviously fail though so that is why alignment when we are talking about some 10 nanometer 20 nanometer kind of geometries the alignment for different mask is very very important Okay so I think I will uh, can we have a break for 5 minutes here please then I will proceed further Hello Yes sir yeah we can yes, have if, uh, in the meanwhile if there are any questions can you please uh, ask participants to give in their question put in their questions and we can have a break just 3 uh, 4 minutes break then yeah yeah sure 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 sure, sure. and maybe we... if there are any questions yeah yeah, yeah. better if uh, participants are if they can uh, type in their questions yeah yeah sure 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 so dear participants probably will take you know four to five minutes break then we will meet uh, again after five minutes meanwhile if you have any questions you can type it in the chat box thank you
Hello, so should we start? Yes, sir, we can start. So we have a few questions. Probably uh, we can uh, take at the end. That will okay, be that is fine. Okay, thank you, sir. So these are uh, some of the design rules. I will skip some of these things. So basically, these layout verification, they fall under these three categories, design rule, electrical rule check, and uh, layout versus schematic. Now, as any integrated circuit, what are the components you need? You will need R, C, inductor, diode, transistors, different types. There can be different types of transistors, NMOS, PMOS, of different voltages, different VTs, high VT, low VT, okay, 1.8 volt, 3.3 volt, 40 volt, 80 volt, LDMOS devices, so various types of transistors, BJT, you will have NPN or PNP and all these things. So, how, what are the issues in uh, layouting, layout of these devices? So, we will discuss some of these things. And uh, analog circuits use a lot of resistors. And uh, you see, uh, the tolerance of these integrated resistors is very poor, plus minus 15, 20%. This means in a if you if, if, in a, if in a design you want a 100 ohm resistor, it will never be a 100 ohm after uh, after fabrication, it can vary by 20%, like 80 ohm to 120 ohm. It can vary. So then in a design, you have to make uh, your design in such a manner so that this variation is minimized. And we always used ratio resistors, R1 by R2, because the ratio, if individual things may vary, but the ratio will not vary. So tracking of these resistors, integrated resistors, where you have a match like a differential amplifier, differential amplifier, you have a resist transistor, two transistors have to be matched because they will amplify the difference in the signal between the two inputs. If there is a difference in the transistor, that will be amplified. Okay, so these uh, things are very are important. And uh, in a uh, IC, when we do the layout, there are various layers like N-well, P-well, N-diffusion, P-diffusion. There will be different doping level in all these. And these areas can be used as a resistor. For example, in this picture, this is a top view. I have an anvil here. There is some doping, say 10 to the power 15 atoms per centimeter cube. So it will have some resistivity. 
so normally resistivity of n well will be say close to 100 to 200 ohm per square so i can uh, the size of this depending on the size of this i can make a resistor and uh, i i will put this dot black dot is a contact for a resistor and this is a metal line so i will put one contact here one contact here so this n well is uh, can be uh, i can synthesize a resistor in n well and uh, cross section will look like this in n well i will make n plus 1 n plus 1 this is uh, for making contact because here aluminium will sit here and uh, for aluminium is a uh, type 3 element and i have to make this region n plus for making a resistive contact and uh, then this will be a resistor depending on this value of uh, the doping level the doping concentration so similarly resistance can be made in p well also it can be made in uh, active areas also it can be made in diffusions also it can be made in the poly also if there is a poly line so i can make two contacts here and depending on this i can make a resistor in poly a resistor can be made in metal also where the sheet resistance is very very small less than 0 0.0 less than 0.1 ohm per square uh, metal they are used in metal fuses and like that and uh, depending on this uh, the value depending on the l and w you can calculate the value of the resistance here and uh, this is a contact each foundry will tell what what is the resistance of the contact like in a 130 nanometer the contact resistance can be between 2 to 4 ohms per contact 2 to 4 ohms per this contact if it's a salicylated contact, it can be even 1 to 2 ohms per contact also. Now, this red color can be a well, can be in diffusion. And depending on this W and L, you can calculate the value of, there will be sheet resistance, say sheet resistance is say 100 ohm per square. 100 ohm per square. And so R will be 100 ohm per square. And then if you have to make a resistor of 1000 ohm, then I have to put by 10 by n. So L should be 10, W should be 1. So it will become 1000. And plus this 2, if it's a 2 ohm here, 2 ohm here, 2 ohm will be added like this. This will be the total resistance of this, of this layer. And this layer, uh, this resistor you can choose from any of these. You can see here, here is a piece of spread. I guess, uh, uh, part participants are aware of the various layers and how is CMOS is a simple CMOS fabrication process by using twin well. So that uh, understanding uh, should be there to understand these things. So it's a piece of I have made an N well here and uh, I have made an N well here and you can see here in the N well I this is a fox this is a fox means it's a field oxide it is a uh, you can say isolation this is for isolation only this fox is for isolation and within the well within the well i have a p diffusion this so this is my resistor i have a p diffusion i am taking contact here and this blue blue one contact here one contact here so depending on this dimension the value of this will be different Okay, so you see here now I will tell you the difference between there are various types of resistors we will not um, due to scarcity of time we will not consider uh, discuss all these but I will tell you the basic differences. Say I have a N-well resistor. I have a piece of straight. I have put an N-well and I have made this one contact. This is one contact, right? Now this resistor will not be a, like a discrete resistor if it is a 100 ohm resistor whatever voltage you uh, apply across its end it will always be 100 ohm which is not the case here in a semiconductor resistor why because if you apply a voltage at this end across this terminal this is p this is n there will be depletion region there will be a depletion region like this here also and within this also okay and this is a depletion uh, this is a depleted of charge so this depth of this n well will change will decrease so there will be a 
you can say voltage coefficient of resistance vcr voltage coefficient of resistor this resistor will change with the value there will be some vcr and uh, as you can see this n well and p n well and p substrate there is a reverse biased pn junction it's a reverse biased pn junction so there will be leakage in this and p is a substrate so this will be connected to other components also because in a p substrate here i have a resistor here will be something else this substrate is common so and this is a reverse bias the reverse bias junction so it will have reverse bias capacitance and this can be treated as a there will be some uh, resistance in the substrate also and here also i will have a capacitor so th this is how it gets linked okay so this resistance will change with the voltage this resistance we will change with the temperature because with the mobility changes with the temperature and it is uh, subjected to interference to other components also but if i make this uh, p well this resistance what is the advantage the advantage is this resistor is made with an n well and n well i have made a contact here and i can put this n well to a very high value say 3 volt if i put now this resistor is isolated if this is connected to n well this resistor is isolated from the substrate so there cannot be interference from the substrate so this is an but then this becomes a three terminal resistor one two and third terminal is this i will put a dc value here so that there is no p and n no reverse bias capacitance here and uh, there is a poly line u and two terminals on the poly you get a poly resistor and poly is sitting on a field oxide which is generate shown here as a fox you see uh, if uh, if i have a 100 ohm per square and i, I want to realize say 1000 1000 ohm resistor 1000 ohm resistor for this it will be you can say l by w uh, sorry uh, 100 ohm into l by w and if i have to realize a 1000 ohm what should be l l should be 10 w should be 1 so i will have like this 10 and 1 or i can have 20 and 2 so or i can have 20 and 2 still it will be 1000 ohm only so whether you choose 1 or 2 which one is better okay from if i choose 2 it will take more area if i choose 1 but you can see here we are drawing here line like this but when we get after fabrication this will not be a line there will be some perturbations like this there will be some perturbations like this okay so if this is very small and if this is more say this is one and if there are four then the effect of these perturbations will be less in case of a if this width is more than this if it is very small because this uh, this small variations will be same if this distance is more the ratio of these variation to the total distance will be less okay so but you cannot keep it very very wide because it will occupy a lot of chip area so you have to compromise somewhere in between you have to optimize this and you will never you can never have such long lines as one okay if you have a big resistor you will use a serpentine like this our layout should always be squarish squarish in shape i will not uh, make a single line because of expect ratio in a manufacturing it is uh, very it is very difficult to achieve that so we will have we will break it in these segments and uh, here in the corner this line the resistor when it is a long line it's very easy because the current flows like this it's very easy to model to calculate the resistance but the corner modeling is very tough and you can see at the corner there will be crowding of the current what is current current is a flow of electron so at the corners there will be crowding of the currents here like here also same and it is very difficult to model this like how much resistance is this these corners are giving so the best is i will use a n diffusion or p diffusion like this and i will put a metal here i will put a metal here then what happens 
metal line resistance you know there is no corner here also there is no corner there is a contact there is a contact there is a metal and uh, current flow because metal has very very low resistivity almost zero so current will flow very smoothly here though there is 90 degree the current direction is changing by 90 degree but it is a metal okay so when the electron comes here very easily they will go here and go like this whereas this path will have some resistance so there can be either this or this and the choice is yours which one you use so this is i say uh, here corners it is very difficult to like uh, model how much resistance but will it have these corners will have value of this resistance is can be calculated but this resistance calculate is tough and flow at the corner is also not uniform so better we have this recommended okay this is a metal metal has very good conductivity so there won't be any issue now you can shield the resistor as i told uh, as i uh, showed uh, the shielding is always better so you can this is one resistor like this it is this is one contact this is one contact this is one contact this is another contact and uh, for a shielding i can have a metal line going like this like this right i will make a metal line going like this and i will connect it to ground i have uh, i have connected it to ground so it's just you have seen you have seen a coaxial cable so what is that coaxial cable there is a outer cable and there is one inside so this is sheeted and this is connected to some ground or vdd and this is the signal which is going okay so this is shielding the effect so same way i have surrounded these are the sheeted resistors and uh, naturally it will very sensitive element you will use it because it will take occupy area space area it will occupy so uh, use anvil resistors anvil resistors they have a large sheet resistance and uh, in the well in the anvil you make contacts wherever possible like this is the well they, these contacts are anvil contacts all these you have made n well contacts and uh, this is the resistance it goes like this like this like this one the resistor this is another resistor here like this okay and this is for shielding purpose another you have put this is a p diffusion this is a p diffusion you have put and these are the contacts for that so this is how the top view will look like the same thing here this is how the top view will look like you can see this are going going like this resistance like this so you calculate this whole thing it will come like here <coughs> whole thing okay so it is like this <coughs> and i i put a contact well contact here it's just like a boundary wall so this uh, i have a p well here i will connect to low voltage so this is shielded now no interference no electron hole pair can come from other regions and affect this so it is completely shielded this is uh, what it mean and if, if you this is a top view and if you do a cross section you will see a cross section like this where this is an n n plus substrate n plus uh, you are uh, diffusion n plus diffusion this this and you are taking a contact from n n plus diffusion okay so uh, process bias will always be there because whatever we are fabricating we wanted to make a 4 micron 4 micron but it it may not come 4 there may be a bias of 0.2 micron so i will get 3.8 if i make it 2 i will i will not get 2 i will get 1.8 if i plan it for 1 i will not get 1 i will get 0.8 okay so here it will be 20% error but here error will be less so this biasing you have to see so you have to come at an optimum width where this bias effect is not there and another region is uh, 
if i if i am uh, making uh, if i have uh, put three resistors very close to each other like a b c they are same i want say r r r i have layouted these three resistors now you see there will be etching in the manufacturing process in this window in this window etching will be slow etching is a chemical reaction okay there is less space here there is lot of space here there is lot of space here there is less space so the area the surface area uh, or rather the volume which is required for etching will be less here so here the etching will be less here and here it will be more okay so large area will give more access to the etchant so the dimension of c and a this width will be less than b okay so it will be b will be like this but uh, c will be slightly less sleeve will be slightly less so the resistor value which will change so what is the option then you put a dummy here here okay now you can see this area this area this area this area it is same so this i have put a dummy it is not doing anything but it is just to create the same neighborhood effect now if it is laid out on x axis or a y axis that depends and uh, even i can have a dummy here also it depend how on which axis you are layouting in a wafer and in the area you see uh, diffusion uh, resistors we are creating by diffusion so if uh, these resistors one is a one is b one is c now in a diffusion uh, what happens is or uh, or in an iron implantation if if i have to do iron implantation or diffusion at these three places the impurities will be very close to the surface like this very close to the surface like this and then i will do a drive in step which is known as a drive in so in drive in these impurities will go deeper and they will have some lateral also they will separate they will separate lateral also this way also okay because drive in is done at a high temperature they will separate this way also lateral also so this way here so this will separate lateral also okay so you can see here this way okay so here if abc or the uh, if abc are to be matched match means same resistor but we will see the concentration of diffusion in b is more so b the value of b resistor will be less as compared to a and c because here also b is getting some portion of a and some portion of c also here so it is getting more diffuse more of p more of boron b is getting so the resistance will be less as compared to a and c it will not be perfectly matched so this uh, placement also is important or you can put a again a dummy here so that it is exactly matched matching means same resistor if you want so seebeck effect from seebeck effect point of view also you have to see uh seebeck means uh, if there is a, a potential difference a potential difference between two dissimilar materials because it's a silicon Uh, well, or a diffusion is a silicon, and metal is an aluminium. Or contact is by a tungsten. So you are putting a tungsten on silicon, or you are putting an aluminium on a silicon. These two materials are different. Okay, so there will be a thermoelectric effect based on the potential difference between these two. There will be here the temperature is cold, and here if it is hot, so there will be some minor voltage plus minus kind of thing. which will be generated because of the seebeck effect and if you are connecting these resistors segments like this so as you can see these potential differences will be added these potential differences will be added because the current flow is like this like this same way here but here it will be cancelled because here flow is here here flow is this way flow is downwards upwards downwards upwards here different so this is always better you will have you will do it like this and again rather than having this kind of a structure if you have this one it is better your thermoelectric effect is also thermoelectric effect is also covered and your this portion is uh, sensitive to alignment misalignment this one here you have make it a bigger and uh, it is not sensitive so do 
in the design in the front end design nothing wrong in this nothing wrong in this if you simulate by using this nothing will give it's just only because of manufacturing this thing will not come exactly at this okay there will be uh, due to some misalignment it is very sensitive to misalignment if there is no misalignment then it's okay but if there is a slight misalignment there will be issue so better you keep your design like this that is the uh, purpose of this now there are uh, there are different type of uh, capacitances which can be realized and nowadays uh, any process it will give a mem capacitor which is known as a metal insulator metal so these are different type of uh, capacitors which are available but uh, nowadays most of the uh, foundries they have they are not giving poly poly capacitors they are giving metal insulator metal capacitor and the capacitor density is normally minimum is 1 femtofarad per mic micrometer square it can go up to some 4 or 5 femtofarad per micrometer square okay so in this the capacitor this is basically a pn junction capacitor as we know that pn junction capacitor can also be used and uh, there will be some parasitics so i will uh, skip so you can use mos also as a capacitor particularly in digital circuits you don't need very precise and mos capacitor as you know in accumulation is this then depletion it falls then inversion again depending on the frequency it can be this or it can be this right so this mos is also mos capacitor depend you can in a accumulation you can use like this or you can use in an inversion but you cannot use in a depletion so it has a limited voltage range for a mos capacitor and mos capacitor is very simple source and drain you short connect to body one terminal gate is one terminal so it has limited application and uh, but the density is very high 10 to 20 microfarad per micrometer square whereas other capacitor is only in the range of 1 to 4 or 5 femtofarad so it takes less area but the voltage range is limited so this is a poly poly capacitor two poly lines you are putting on a oxide this is an oxide you are putting two poly lines on an oxide and there is a dielectric in between mim is capacitor exactly the same way instead of poly lines we have metal lines we have metal lines metal mim this this is the most commonly used capacitor so you can see here this is the bottom plate this is the bottom plate this is the top plate okay this is the top plate bottom plate will be bigger plate because you have to take contact of this bottom plate contact will come on the top and the top plate contact will be here okay so bottom plate will have parasitic capacitances which is shown here capacitor which is shown here so this bottom plate because this is metal this is metal there may be three four metals uh you see this is a top metal this is the thickness of metal uh which is shown in black color top metal is always thick this line is very thick so this is the top this is the second from top it is not so thick this is the third from top and these are normally same thickness level top is thick okay so what you can do is here what is shown is there is a dielectric in between so this also becomes a capacitance i can use this but problem with with this is the capacitance value is very small because you can see this thickness is more this is maybe around 6000 7000 angstrom okay and the capacitance is equal to epsilon a by t or d so this distance is 6000 7000 angstrom so the value of c is very low so you need even for a small capacitance you need a big area a hey, you need a big area okay and uh, but that is the reason what we will do is we will not use this plate we will have we will not use this dielectric we will use a thin dielectric we will have a special layer and we will have a very thin dielectric which will be used for that okay so i am showing this we will have a plate here this plate bottom plate we will have an upper plate and i will have a very thin dielectric which will be used here bottom plate i am taking these two contacts 
top in this contact chair and uh, the area of the capacitor will be the area of the top plate this area is more it will be area of top plate and bottom plate will have a capacitance to the body cb it will have a parasitic capacitance bottom plate parasitic capacitance will be more so this is the cross section this is the cross section and you see the top view you see the top view is this is your top plate this one here exactly here here so this is the top plate and these crosses x these are the contacts these are the contacts of the top plate contacts and this one is the bottom plate this one this is the bottom plate these are the bottom plate contacts this layer is the bottom plate contacts so area of the capacitor will be shown by will be calculated by using this l and this w this w and this l w into l will be the area of the top plate only okay because capacitances this is the covered capacitances which will come and uh, bottom plate will have a parasitic capacitance so this capacitance has two plates in a discrete uh, components discrete uh, capacitor you can connect either this terminal or this terminal it won't matter unless it is an electrolytic cap where you have polarity plus and minus if there is no polarity it doesn't matter but here these two terminals are not similar you can see here the bottom has a parasitic capacitance which is quite high which can be 15 to 20% of this overall this top plate will not have much of parasitic capacitance bottom plate has Uh, this parasitic capacitance so you have to if you if you have to connect this capacitance to a very sensitive node so use the this plate to connect to a sensitive node rather than this because it has more parasitic capacitance available so then there will be edge effects you see this case another example i want to give you in any analog design there will be many different resistors it will like you will need some 200 ohm resistor 2500 ohm resistor 4500 ohm resistor like this so you will one ways you plan you do layout of all these resistance like this this is 200 ohm this is maybe 2500 ohm this is maybe 4500 ohm so this is not a good practice one practice is i will decide a unit resistor a unit resistor and this this designer has to design there are certain guidelines and he learn by uh, experiences say if these 200 2500 4500 are the thing so i decide 100 as a unit resistor say 100 so i will design one this is 100 i have designed one element now where i want 200 i will put two of these and connect in series i will get 200 where i am getting 2500 i will connect these you can say this is 100 ohm so 25 of these and connect in series and again 25 i will not connect in this whole line so i will make a 5 by 5 matrix 5 by 5 matrix square is in nature and i will connect this in series like this 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 whole So similarly with the forty five hundred, same thing holds for capacitor also. Same thing holds for transistors. Everything. So I will decide one unit resistor, unit transistor, unit capacitor. Whereas the other sizes are multiple, integral multiple of this unit. It's just like a good example is a brick. The size of the brick is fixed in a house. The wall may be different, but the number of bricks used are different then. okay but the size of the brick doesn't change so same way in a good analog design you and the reason for this is you see i have two cases now i uh, this is some component say capacitor or any you can assume so this is 1 by 1 this is 2 by 2 so here these i have designed so here if you see the area is this is case 1 the area is 1 area is 1 and here area is 4 so area to perimeter ratio if you see in this is 1 is to 4 here the perimeter is 
2 and 8 and here it is 4 so ratio is 1 is to 2 so by uh, explaining unit thing instead of 2 by 2 i wanted 4 value here the value is 1 so this means i will have 4 of these 1 1 1 1 and uh, if i connect these it comes out to the same thing only same 4 i will get this so why is this is better you see if if there is a bias if there is an undercut say 0 0.05 0 0.05 undercut means instead of this dimension i get 0 0.01 here 0 0.01 here so i get like this so this means 0 0.1 0 0.05 here 0 0.05 here so total is 0 0.1 is less so if you calculate how it will be it will be 0 0.9 into 0 0.9 here which is 0 0.81 and in this case it will be 1.9 into 1.9 this you can calculate here here the ratio will be 1 is to 4.4.6 parameter will be 1 is to 2.1 in this case first case in second case it will be same it will be same okay so because a 0.5 cut here will affect more as a percentage of total parameter rather than this because this is bigger 0.5 will matter much as a percentage it will be less okay so that is the reason if there is an offset offset here in a smaller area and a larger area will be will result in different uh, values so we have to see the area parameter ratios we have to maintain the area parameter ratio if we maintain the area parameter ratio as same that will be better so these effects are neutralized and you see here etching at this edges if i want a very uh, uh, rectangular or a square thing etching as this square cannot be like just at 90 degree it can be like this it's a chemical reaction it cannot be at 90 degree it can be uh, under edge or over edge it can be like this or it can be like this instead of this i am getting more okay so etching at the round at the corners they are rounded so two corners so better is this means 90 percent corners will be eroded and 270 degree will have incomplete removal of material some corners will be you can see here they are eroded and there are some corners where you have more material this is not etched more material is left okay so but if these two two of these corner and two of these corner you have it will compensate so you use equal number of 90 degree corner equal number of 270 degree corners you can use you can you will be able to get rid of this problem as shown here so these are small small thing which will matter and you can see here the uh, because there can be variation in x direction there can be variation in y direction if you have a unit value the variation will be spread and the total variation i want c1 is equal to c2 c1 is say 10 picofarad c2 is 10 picofarad both are 10 picofarad i can place like this c1 c2 10 picofarad but in x axis there is a variation instead of this 10 I will get say 9 variation here if it is linear here it may be more I may get 8 here so I wanted both 10 10 but I am getting this 9 I am getting this 8 okay so what should I do I will place like this so you can see here uh, let us see c1 so c1 is this 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 c1 is this, c1 is this. So if there is a variation, you can calculate a variation at 1, 2, 3 and 4 and, and in the same way here variation 1, 2, 3, 4. So almost in C1 and C2, if you add these number, the variations will come out to be same in C1 and C2. So that effective value of C1 and C2 will be same. Okay, and in any process there, there is a variation and uh, once we discuss the fabrication process steps, why these verification uh, why these uh, variations come so that uh, is easily understood and uh, 
it is better to have a dummy cap we have put a dummy cap here it better to have a dummy cap here and a substrate put as many contacts at the substrates we are putting a substrate contact like here so this will we look like an a resistor sorry as a capacitor now there will be fringing here okay there will be fringing on the plates because this this plate is bigger lower plate so there will be some fringing here okay so you can minimize the fringing by using not only a square by hexagonal kind of thing you can try to make it this and try to minimize these uh, fringing effects so accurate matching of capacitors these parameter ratios have to be matched proximity effects in this interconnect and parasitic interconnect everything you have to mismatch so you can see this long range fringe capacitance so this this is a if uh, these fringes short range and here you will have long range so these fringes how you can suppress you can put a shield here you can put a shield here this will be this fringing will be cut if you put a shield as shown here you can put a shield here also so you have cut these fringes only edges fringes will remain which will be minor if this area is more this capacitance is more this may be less than 2% 3% of the overall but if you don't put a shield here this can be a substantial amount 15 20% of this so these are some of the techniques which are used in a transistor if you have a mos here and uh, you this is drain this is source you put three contacts you put three contacts here this is the body contact and uh, if it's a long w if you are putting single contact then what happens here it will be a resistance like in the same way here right it will be a resistance like here you can see here so what happens here contact because it's a w is more if this is source this is drain uh, current electrons will flow from source to drain the current flows from uh, drain to source this is a contact this resistance is more so current flow will be more here it will be less here because there will be resistance it will more resistance here the current flow will be more here so you have made a high w so that more current you get but most of the current is flowing in this part only so this part will get heated up here less current will flow okay because of the you can see here this more current will flow here so you can uh, model this as a like this so this transistor this transistor so many transistors but this transistor will take less current only this take more current this will get heated up so then what you have to do so this uh, this is some data ohms how many resistance and things like that so you have to put contact everywhere this is what it means you have to put contact at every where and uh, you can put one single contact like this okay never do this why instead of this you put multiple contacts like this multiple contacts contact size is always one fixed because etching is fixed based on that in this if you have if you have put down uh, 10 contacts contact resistance of one contact is 5 ohm there are 10 contacts in parallel then what will be the effective resistance less than 1 ohm right here is a bigger contact but if it doesn't open there is a problem then it will become an open here even if these two contact doesn't open then also it won't matter because there is sufficient number of contacts and etching Uh, the recipe of etching is registered in uh, by assuming there is one contact size because then if the contact here is more metal because contact is by metal tungsten and tungsten has to be etched in the neighborhood okay so that we minimize uh, that effect so single contact wherever you get area you fill it fill it with contacts as seen here don't leave it any empty space gate contact is never on the top of the channel as you can see it is extended and uh, if i see if i have a mos third yeah so this is the gate this is the source drain 
source drain contact in a 3d picture you put it contact here okay source drain contact you will do it here drain contact you will do it here gate contact you will never do it here okay because in make this is a very thin oxide and there is a poly on the poly you will not make a contact above just above the channel this gate will be extended if i say if i if i explain like this this is tox and this will be poly this poly will be like this this will be extended over you see here what it will be here it will be fox field oxide okay here also there will be field oxide if you see the cross section in the side wise there will be free field oxide here in the front there will be oxide here here and this gate will go on top of it okay so this will go on top of it and uh, basically it will look like this it will go look like this and uh, this is source drain this is source drain this is poly and if i take this and here on top of this this will be in the next if if i see from this side from this side this view if i see so i will get a even a this and uh, like this this is w this is source drain and here it is here it is fox only so this area is uh, on field oxide this particular gate is coming over field oxide so i am putting a contact here channel is between this so i am putting a contact here so i am not putting a contact here here and this this thing there will be a field oxide and this will go on top of this okay so that is how it it goes like this and i will make a contact on this here and this is a field oxide transistor is here so i will stop uh, because there is so many things to be discussed but uh, i was supposed to be for 2 hours so i will stop here and if uh, the participants they have any interest in uh learning more of the design and uh, if you want to have a very good understanding it is better to have a fabrication step understanding of what are the various steps in the fabrication what are the issues and then because finally this design has to be fabricated and we can you can appreciate more some of these uh, layout uh, steps what is the meaning and how it is done and uh, so we can have another session particularly on these uh, fabrication and uh, design things so uh, for the time being uh, i will uh, wind up and uh, i will request uh, questions and if you can please ask uh, the questions and uh, either you can ask directly or you can send it through the chat okay thank you so much sir it was really really amazing actually you started with uh, indian scenario uh, in fabrication and uh, analog and design flows then layout design and uh, for us also is uh, you know very learning experience mm -hmm. so thank you, thank, thank you so much sir so nice talk so uh, we have a few questions from students uh should i read sir should i read the questions for you sir yeah if there are any questions otherwise okay so one question from mr uh, robert from africa so his question is what is the main material used in chip manufacturing and why that material out of many semiconductor materials so probably is asking about silicon so probably you address that one yeah the main material uh, presently is a silicon and uh, let me explain he asked why is silicon that also is uh, you see how to decide on the material there are uh, if you understand the physics uh, semiconductor physics 
let us compare silicon germanium so the properties which are important is a band gap eg and intrinsic carrier concentration at room temperature which is ni so for a silicon the band width is band gap band gap is 1.16 for a germanium it is 0.7 lower band gap the this is a intrinsic carrier concentration at room temperature which is 300 k so for a silicon is 1 into 10 is power 10 carriers per cm cube and uh, in case of a germanium it is 1 raised to the power 10 to the power 14 carriers per cm cube you see if uh, what this means is germanium because of lower band gap it will be more leaky it will there will be more leakages there will be a limit on the maximum temperature because these are the carriers at room temperature if you increase the temperature these carriers will increase much more and they will come close to 200 uh, 10 raised to the power 20 or 21 and at that time this material becomes almost a metal it becomes almost a metal okay even the silicon you cannot use beyond 200 degree centigrade you see for a gallium nitride the band gap is more the close to 3.8 or so so the intrinsic carrier concentration is very less 10 is 10 is to power 6 or 10 is to power 10 is to power 5 so it can you can use if you have to use a chip at a very high uh, temperature say in a furnace or a rocket nozzle where the temperature can be 1000 degree centigrade you cannot use a silicon you can use a chip made of gallium nitride mosfet devices you need an oxide native oxide it is not possible to grow a native oxide on germanium germanium oxide go2 converts to geo which is soluble in water okay so if you wash the vapor in water this oxide will go and uh, the properties of the oxide with the semiconductor that is also very very important so there are in fact many reasons why silicon is used for making mosfets and why mosfets why not bipolar devices mosfet you cannot scale a bjt device you scaling is applicable only for mosfet and with scaling you get enhanced performance at a lower area so you are able to pack more transistor in a small area now in a very small area of this much size you are able to pack one more more than 1 billion mos devices 1 billion transistors more functionality okay so these are reasons some of the reasons and now it is uh, compound semiconductor is picking up because uh, silicon is a indirect band gap semiconductor it cannot emit light you cannot make photo detectors with the limited applications in silicon there is compound semiconductor there direct like gallium arsenide is a direct semiconductor and it is used uh, algan algan aluminum gallium nitride aluminum gallium arsenide all gas these kind of compound semiconductor are used for white leds which are very common in our houses led bulbs so those are compound semiconductors all gan okay uh, next any okay so so his another question is uh what is the consumption share of africa as a continent probably it is more of a data based yeah i will not be able to answer <laughs> yeah so another question is uh, probably he is from uh, somewhere from europe his question is uh, european countries is uh, consumption is getting decreased year by year what are they using now uh, for technology yeah european uh, uh, you see uh, there are uh, very good companies and uh, if you see infineon is there in germany i guess infineon ams is there philips is there in netherland they have a foundry ams is austria it's in austria they also have a foundry but if you see in the semiconductor in the vlsi race <coughs> the uk doesn't have any big foundry so main uh, concentration if you see the chip production wise it is in us china and uh, basically dominant by taiwan and uh, there are certain good uh, design houses good uh, design houses in europe but manufacturing is uh, not very popular 
chip manufacturing is mainly in asia and then testing and assembly is also in uh, singapore hong kong malaysia all testing packaging lines of intel and other companies other even uh, european companies they are they are scattered in europe and uh, they are scattered in uh, asian countries and japan too so it is there and the uh, uh, production level is uh, secure i think the consumption level if you see in europe in the last 10 to 11, last 10 15 year it is same it is not uh, i think declining it is remaining same steady because already i think uh, the population growth is also not there and uh, all those countries are developed countries everything yes, is developed yes. here kind of things yeah. are getting saturated right? yes yes they are in saturation whereas in india you have a lot of scope here we, in Europe, everybody has already these uh, gadgets and here there is a lot of uh, huge population, India, China and other countries where there is a lot of scope for increase of sale of these devices. That is there. Okay. So another participant he is asking about, uh, is there any free alternatives to synopsis tools for practice in digital design? Digital design, not much is there. Yeah, you can, yeah, uh, place and route won't be there. Physical verification won't be there. But magic is there. You can learn the magic. You can learn the layout by using magic tool. And I think that is good enough. You can learn and uh, T-Spice is there for circuit simulator. Yeah. And uh, I suggest you make a circuit by using schematic entry in a magic. And you can learn that. And uh, digital is a uh, highly, you can say, tool specific. You need uh, so many tools, static timing analysis, your prime time, prime rail, so many tools are needed. Though many companies are trying to make uh, open tools for that, free tools, but uh, still it's a long way. But anyhow, one can learn the basic concepts and one can learn the layout by uh, magic. This is what my suggestion is. Okay. Thank you, sir. Another question is by Ananna, what will be the effect of mutual capacitance due to sealed registers? Yeah, those capacitances, effect of capacitances yes. are there. Effect yeah. of each, uh, the parasitic uh, capacitor, as the scaling, these dimensions are becoming smaller, the elements are becoming closer to each other. So these uh, parasitic uh, effects are there and uh, those have to be taken care of while layouting that and you have to see how much uh, sensitive that particular uh, thing is it may not be throughout the that is why you can have a dedicated well for these where you can put more of guard rings and things like that to reduce the effect you can increase the spacing where that effect is causing problem in the circuit, you can increase the spacing so that that effect is minimized. So these kind of layouting techniques are there to minimize that effect. You cannot reduce the effect, you can minimize to a large extent. Okay. So another question is, uh, what is the best way to start with Ferilog A models? Uh, again, he is asking, is there any open source tool? No, no, no. I don't think. I am not yeah. aware. Yeah, I am not aware even for very long if yeah, there is yeah. any specific there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so I have one question. So yes, uh, when we uh, talk about seven nanometer or five nanometer technology, not then uh, quantum effects and everything comes yeah. into play. Yeah. So how this uh, design actually is taken care of at the commercial level? So by obeying all these effects yeah these in a foundry you see when uh, when you start a, any design you the foundry gives a process design kit which is known as a pdk right uh, the pdk it contains uh, process related information which is useful <coughs> which a designer should know it will give the legal devices what the legal devices are, transistors, active uh, elements, passive elements, how they have to be laid out, what are the variations with respect to temperature in the temperature range and uh, in matching and uh, like how much Vt will change and what are the uh, certain effects because in a transistor, what is important is IV curves, right? Any variation 
will be reflected in the input output characteristics or transfer characteristics that what we call it an iv curve so that those are known as model device models so those effects are incorporated in device models and pdk will have all these device models will be given to you so you can simulate the circuit as per those device models and whatever the variation is expected in vt and other parameters they will be given in uh, this design kit so the transistor uh, the designer they will use that information to verify his design by using software that this design if i uh, if goes through that 7 nanometer or 8 nanometer this this can be the yield and it will pass functionally or what will be the uh, end specification on a silicon so he can simulate that design so all these effects are sim are simulate uh, are uh, coded in terms of a software program and uh, they are included in the design kit okay 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 so sir another question is for example when you talk about mixed signal design for example i have a analog circuit and digital circuit mm -hmm. and uh, digital circuit often we can reduce the supply voltage to lower values maybe 0.5 volts also yeah and for analog uh, part maybe we we have to give some higher uh, Agreed. Uh, su supply voltage maybe 1 volt so yeah. in a single chip how different power voltages are i mean uh, supply voltages are maintained so will you speak uh, yeah because that? in a you see in a like we take an example of a processor my uh, processor even a 64 bit or a 128 bit processor which intel is making so there will be from the outside there may be 1.5 volt there will be some ios which can be 1.5 volt there may be the core the like alu arithmetic logic unit and various registers which need not be at 1 volt it can be at 0 0.8 or 0 0.7 volt also right because you have to do the logic and uh, the power dissipation is proportional to al alpha cv square f alpha is activity uh, your act um, activity factor and it's a vdd square so uh, i uh, gain a lot by reducing the vdd from even 1 volt to 0 0.8 volt because it is square and f is the speed speed you cannot compromise speed is increasing only so you can play with the vdd and capacitance is a again it depends on the uh, your uh, input capacitance and load capacitance is it depends on the technology it's not in the designer hand so designer can reduce the supply volt vdd and its square effect so there will be multiple power supplies within the chip so these power from the outside you will get only single power supply so you will use LDO low dropout regulators will be put and there may be two or three or four different power supplies in the chip. So those three, four LDO <coughs> here and they will give supply to those various sections. Same in, 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 in nowadays you have a low power design like a standby if the memory, if this memory is not being used, all memory will not be used. So I will put it in a standby mode. I will make VDD even 100 millivolt so that it retains the information Inform at 100 millivolt or 200 millivolt. It will retain the information. And when I have to write or read the information, I will power up to one volt. So that kind of circuit will be there, which takes care, which puts this in a sleep mode. Okay, so they, they, in a section, the chip sizes are increasing over the last few years and uh, lot of uh, memory component 50 percent of the of the chip size includes memory these days sram or non-volatile memories so each uh, segment to in decrease the overall power each segment has a specific uh, power supply requirement and which is met by different uh, lvrs which are put and uh, the design of the power grid within the circuit is a quite a challenge how to design the power grid because I have to minimize the IR drop. I have to minimize the IR drop. Same voltage should go to each transistor. So there are millions and billions of transistors and each transistor should see the same volt. And uh, it is also falling. And analog chip, you don't uh, design at a lower thing because you want to maximize gain. Gain and intrin int intrinsic gain GMR1 <coughs> will fall because you want a game, maximum uh, gain and in fact in a uh, even at a 65 nanometer 
uh, design, the channel length for analog design are not 65 nanometer. They are two, three times more than that. Even correct, four times, correct. five times more than that. So similarly, in a uh, these 10 nanometer or 20 nanometer, these are fin fed designs. So channel length may not be 10 nanometer. They will be much more than that. And uh, number of transistors in an analog design as well is not much. There may be few thousands. It, it will never be millions. Whereas, right, in a, right. yeah, in a digital design, it will be millions because you see a 12 bit or a 16 bit ADC or a DAC. So it, it will be very few, a few thousand transistors only. But in a digital, where logic, where a lot of gates are there, there you have more transistors. And those transistors are made by minimum dimensions. Right and minimum power supplies. Correct. Analog correct. transistors they are at a high power because you need a swing. You see, you need an amplifier. You need a voltage swing. You cannot have a very small swing. Right? Another reason is the noise margin. You see, noise window here, here. This is zero. This is one. This will not be zero. There is a noise floor. Any technology will have a noise floor. This means this noise floor is say you have a fifty micro ampere is your noise okay or a 50 uh, sorry micro volt 50 micro volt is the noise so you have this much space only so your minimum signal can be 50 micro volt and maximum can be one volt okay so uh, this way and uh, if you are reducing uh, one volt to 0 0.8 so this uh, 50 micro volt is not getting reduced this is same. So 0 0.8 is getting reduced, but here it's not reduced. So if you have to calculate the dynamic range, the dynamic range will be 1 divided by 50 micro volt. So this will become the dynamic range and uh, how much it will be 1 by 50 micro is 10 power 6. So I will have 100 by 50 into 10 is power 4. This means 20,000. So this is 20,000. So you can see this 10-bit uh, system is 1K and you can say 20-bit system, uh, this will be around 15 or 16-bit accuracy, 14 or 15-bit accuracy only you will get. Correct. Okay, so you cannot get more than this. So you will not be able to resolve signals which are much, even if I, even this 50 microvolt depends on the frequency, but um, because if the frequency is more, the noise will be more because all these components will be added. So analog design is completely different set of issues. Digital completely different set of issues. And uh, scaling is more relevant for digital. They have been done for digital and for memories, DRAM. DRAM, you have a single transistor, one T and one capacitor. So it's scaling is more relevant for these kind of technologies. Correct, correct, sir. So another question is probably uh, I'm asking too many questions. Maybe this is the last question. Yeah. Uh, we often talk about uh, moderate inversion and weak inversion region uh, to reduce the power and all. Okay. So people uh, design some circuits also. In fact, I also designed one open at yeah. uh, SCL only. But is these transistors are uh, really used in practical applications? Yes, yes, yes. Very good question. You are in a subthreshold region, even below moderate uh, inversion, even subthreshold region, lower than VT. So your bias current may be in nano ampere, 5 nano ampere, 10 nano ampere. If you bias a transistor with these kind of current, your uh, frequency, the bandwidth will be only 4 or 5, 5 or 10 hertz only. Right. So if you uh, make a uh, amplifier in this, with this spec, it will be used for medical applications. Medical. You don't need very high frequencies, very high bandwidth. Uh, another example is a pacemaker, which is in the heart. Pacemaker has to send signal only two hertz, three hertz kind of a signal, two hertz, three hertz kind of a signal, and it operates on a battery. 1.2 volt or 1.5 volt battery, right? And battery cannot be changed. Uh, you have to open the heart of a patient. Correct. So it has to live for 8, 10 uh, your years. So those kind of, and you don't have a very high, you see more power is required for high frequencies, higher bandwidth, more fuel, 
you give to the car more speed you will get you cannot get uh, more speed with less fuel less speed less same here if you don't need more bandwidth you can design the circuit at lower this thing at sub threshold region lot of medical software uh, medical devices are at in this sub threshold designs only that also is a very good area of uh, work and many uh, amplifiers are designed in the sub, uh, sub threshold range also okay 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 thank you sir uh, thank you. i have got my answer and yeah so kind to accept our sincere thanks to you uh, and we hope that in near future we'll have you again uh, in some of our talks and i know it is very very interesting for the students as well because they have some courses on uh, mix signal design and uh, TLSI design also for both MTech and VTech students, and mm -hmm. it will be really uh, helpful for them as well as for us also. And we hope that uh, in near future we'll have you again. Sure. So uh, with this, uh, uh, I thank you once again, and uh, we thank uh, PC sir uh, uh, to be with us this evening. and uh, thank you all the participants thank you so much thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you all of you thank you kale ratul kal ka bhi link bhej dena mujhe yes sir 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 uh, uh, google meet is same sir for all days and yeah, i will attend yeah you see now that it has been inaugurated so that's fine but i'll just attend so just send me the link yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. link is same sir yeah okay so yeah thank you so much sir again okay thank you sir thank you sir